may be another reason why I like uh, grain elevators so much. Out here in Kansas, they are the prairie skyscrapers. So you can see the tree line and see what's sticking above the tree line. You can always see an elevator sticking above the tree line. Hence, prairie skyscraper. This is our skyscrapers in the prairie. Grain elevator. Grain elevator complex. That's a three silo wide row. And then because it was being used fairly much or getting filled up, they added another, they added a big metal grain bin on the south end. And as you see, there's a leg and a conveyor going, a conveyor and a leg going over to the, uh, and then they got, they put in one of those conveyors for ground storage. And of course, there's a leg on this side going to a surge bin, and that's loads out on the train side. So the metal one, that's the loading out onto the train side, and here comes the big metal grain bin they put up. That's probably 100 bushels right there, and that elevator there is probably, eh, it's probably a million bushels half a million bushel. That's probably half a million bushels. 100,000 there. 500,000. Eh, it might be bigger. There's that half mile long elevator I keep talking about. Can't really see it from here though. Half mile long. At one time it was the biggest in Kansas. And I still think, I think I read up on it, it's still like number three largest in Kansas and the other two I think there's another one here in Hutch that's uh, a little bit bigger and then the other one I think is um, man I'm not quite sure Hastings no uh, Kansas not Hastings um, I can't think of it now Let's see there's one there right there there's a head house Oop, where'd it go well, there's, or there's half mile long one. Oh, the half mile long one's back there. And there's one there, and there's one there, and there's one right there. We got a we got a T shaped one down here. Y'all just need to go to Google Maps, pull up Hutchison, Kansas, and just look at all the look at all the uh, grain elevator complexes in Hutchison, Kansas. You know, Wichita. Wichita is another good place because there's a lot of grain elevators in Wichita, Kansas, too. So we got this one down here that's coming into view now. three of them. there's three elevators right there we got this this one here which runs over there there's a taller one behind it you see it's to the left of the head house and then there's another one right there it's a little short one it's kind of hard to see with all the trees so this will be better so there's one there, there's one behind it, which is taller. And then there's one on this end, which they got plugged in to the one in front, the shorter one. There's a little conveyor coming down out of it. That's probably coming down. The head house unit, see that's the Cargill. It says Cargill. So the head house unit, what the head house unit does is that's where the legs are at. They're internal legs. The grain goes up, it gets to distributed into a distribution center, which goes into, if it's going into the, if the, now see that, that, okay. Sorry, I need to backtrack. That is the only elevator that I've seen in Kansas that has the square, head house all the way down to the ground okay 
all the other ones I've told you about it's got just the rectangular head house up on top of silos so that's a two row see and there's there's two more back there two different sizes this one over here with the building that probably is part of a flour mill and the building in front of the other one over there is probably a flour mill there's a little short one right there there's one there which I don't think is being used again used because it doesn't look like it is and there's two out on the west side that I can't show you right now but see there's so they got them all tied into each other by way of conveyors see there's a there's pipes going down now I don't think they're being I don't think this one's being used either that one there string of Vinny's tankers that I tried to do earlier but I forgot to hit the record button. There's a prison over there. Oh yeah, Hutchison. Hutchison is famous for grain elevators, prisons, and gas wells. Down here on the south side of Hutch, they had a whole bunch of gas, uh, gas leaks at one time and there were some explosions going on because of the gas leaking. But now, we also have Siemens out here on the east side. They build the, I think they build the collars and the, and the nacelles for uh, so, uh, the giant windmills. Anyway, back to the elevators. The head house unit, like I said, there's a, there's a leg system. And if you don't know what a leg is, you go to Vinny's channel, he'll talk about it. He shows that that's the uh, square tubing that's uh, spaced a little bit. It goes up into the distribution center. The distribution center, all it is is basically a cone that has these chutes, round chutes that are coming off of it at different intervals at the bottom of the cone. Now all that gets controlled by a, a pulley system and this inside the inside the cone is a is a uh, discharge chute that rotates between the different points of the of the silos in the head house unit. The sil you know the silos that are contained inside the head house. Uh, to get to the silos that are the add-on silos that are outside of the head house, one of the chutes goes into a conveyor which then travels across the gap between the, the head house elevator and the add-on silos. And then at different intervals along that conveyor there are stops, I guess stop gates that come down and direct it down into the into the silos either on, on either side of the conveyor. Now the one thing you gotta know about a, a concrete elevator is that there are more silos other than what you see on the outside. You got the round portion, which is a silo. Now those are those are usually connected. I mean there's two round silos that are touching each other. But they they use the gap between the silos as well. So you put you know four circles together, you're gonna have a gap. You're gonna have a gap in between where they touch. That is utilized as a silo as well. It's a little small, but they still utilize it. If, if the, uh, I should say, if the diameter of the silo is a fairly large one. Okay? So, if you see eight silos, you might actually have uh, eight more, if not, well, yeah, it'd be eight because they would have one side gap between the row on one side, well I should know, it, 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 I guess it would be more or less a star shaped silo, well not a star shape, but maybe a square or something. Oh, we have another elevator over here. There's an elevator there. And I think that's it for 
I can see at least. Oh, there's some train cars back there. Which is the Missouri Pacific. Well, it was Missouri Pacific. So anyway, so of the eight silos that you see, you have the gaps between them. So on one side, if, if they utilize and put a wall between the eight silos, then you have silos in the gaps, which would be four on one side and four on the other side. Now, if there is no wall between the between the silos, then you just have one. You would have an additional four silos. So you may only see eight round silos, but there's actually the interior gaps of the silos creating another silo. So that's four more. So you got four, eight, twelve. You got twelve silos in that extra add-on portion. Now the head house, that gets interesting because the one elevator that I worked at, actually I worked at two different ones. The head house, like I said, is on top of the silos. It was a four, it was four silos put together, but they were spaced out far enough apart that the interior between the four silos actually had, okay, so between the two that were across from each other, say that's where you're trucks drive so underneath where the where the uh, trucks drive there's actually four silos in the in the same space as those two round silos so then you have that on the other side there's, there's four more there and then they'd have going lengthwise as you drive the truck you have that amount of silos too so there's four more there on the other side they couldn't because they had the leg going up through the concrete leg, the elevator leg, to get the grain from the bottom of the pit to the top of the head house into the distribution center. Okay, They had to have a space for an elevator too. Now the elevator that I that I actually rode up on was a cable pulley system. The elevator was a cage and it was only big enough for one person and maybe a bucket of tools. That was it. And it was darker. I mean, if, if the lights work, there's lights up alongside the yellow or alongside the silo. If they worked, they worked. If they didn't, you had to ride up and change them out. So at 100, well, 100 foot, it got it tended to get kind of dark if the lights didn't work. You know, not very far up either. I bet I'd probably say about 10 or 15 feet up, it got dark. And then you wouldn't see light again until you got you know 10 or feet, 10 or 15 feet from the top of the silo. Okay. So there's that. So you got on the leg side, and the leg side is usually if the elevator is next to the railroad tracks, the legs, the leg is usually on the side of the railroad tracks. I don't know why. I'm thinking just because less travel for the grain to go. And that thing, the, the leg, the leg always runs counterclockwise. Don't ask me why. It just did. At least I think most of them do. At least. Oh, there's an elevator out here. This is a small one. But see, this one's actually three, three silo wide. You got one on the end. You got two on the sides. Actually, it's square. So I guess that's it's square, but it is three. I think it's three silos long. Yeah, it is. It's three silos. One, two, three. Most of them were only four. Then, then they added on eight more. But it looked like that one had silos on the ends as well on the add-on section. Yes, it did. So of the head house, main silo, they spread it out so you can drive a truck down through the center of it, of the main one, so you can drive a truck down and unload inside, of course. So those silos that are created by the gaps from the silos, from the, from the round silos, they had to stop short of where the trucks drove. Now back, back when all these were built, they didn't have these fancy trucks with 
13 foot high stacks on them. So any, anybody with the 13 high stack on their truck couldn't pull all the way through the silo. They had to back in, load the back in the trailer, and then back up. Actually, actually, if, if the silo, if the elevator was long enough, and they had wheat in all the compartments, or if they had the same commodity in all the in all the pockets and all the silo pockets, you could actually load the trailer, uh, the back of the trailer, and the in the back half of the silo, and the front of the trailer in the front part of the silo of the elevator. But most of the time, you had you loaded the back. Actually, you loaded the front, and then you pulled forward. You know, you backed in with the big truck. I've actually loaded that in the elevator with the other company that I drove for. We uh, we, we would haul grain out if they weren't getting train cars in quick enough. So he had some grain grain hoppers, Tempe and a uh, and a corn husker. Corn huskers are slanted on the ends, but he got rid of that, gave it to a family, and then he had the two Tempe's, you know, a white Tempe and a black Tempe. Trailer. I always got the black one because it just looked it just looked good. Because it had it had a whole bunch of lights on it. It had two rows of lights on it the length of the trailer. There's they're only about 42 foot long. But we had pressure gauges, so you could watch the pressure gauge in the truck when they were loading the front and at like 16, I think 16 or 17, 16, 15, I think at 15 or 16, you'd you know tell them to stop it and then you pull forward and you load and once it went up to 17, they just stopped again because 17 was was about 40,000 pounds, or well, maybe just under like 38,000 gross. I mean, for the for the commodity. So then we would haul it, come down to down to Hutchison, or we'd haul it to uh, Lyons to the ethanol plant, or to Pratt to the ethanol plant. Also loaded out Brownell did that. Brownell has no more has no railroad tracks, so they only haul grain out by truck anymore. Uh, so anyway, so the elevator on the on the railroad side would the spot where the, the elevator went up, which was basically between two silos, the round portions of the silo. And then of course where the leg went up that was missing there was no there was no silo there for holding for, for holding grain either so anyway the wheat or the commodity is going up and being distributed it's either going into the silo into the main unit or it's being diverted to the conveyor which then runs over to the add-on silos which then gets diverted down into one of the silos now to get all this grain back up and into trucks or into uh, train cars, they, like I said, when loading a truck, they had, well, let me, let me rephrase, in the center of the driving lane for the vehicles, you had pits. You'd have three pits or two pits, and they both fed down into the into the leg where the they all fed down to the leg where the leg would pick the wheat up or the commodity and go up to the top and sling it over. Actually, let me think about that. Let me run. Actually, no, I think I think they ran clockwise to tell you the truth. Now that I think about it, because the leg would come down. The leg is a is a conveyor is a is a rubber belt conveyor that has pockets mounted on the belt. These pockets are big enough to hold, I don't know, a couple of scoops of, 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 of grain or whatever, maybe three or four wheat shovelfuls of grain. You know, maybe maybe a five gallon bucket or a five bushel bucket or something, I don't know. But it would, the grain would go down to a pit, the bucket would come down, scoop it up, and then take, take it all the way up to the top, which is almost damn near to the top of the head house, I mean, clear up to the top top. As it came over, it had enough force because it was going fast enough that it would throw all that grain into this round centrifugal hopper, which then, like I said, got dis distributed either into the main unit or down the chute to the conveyor that ran over to the, to the other silos. So all these silos are getting filled up. So down on the underneath, underground, about eight feet or so, depending on 
how the elevator is built. The concrete ones are usually, you know, built underground as well. There's another conveyor with a whole bunch of chutes going down out of the conveyor, out of the silos. Now these silos aren't hopper bottom, they're just slanted. The concrete floor in them are slanted. It goes to one point where there's a chute about, about a 16 inch in square. The chute goes down onto, or the gate, the gate is 16 inches square. It goes into a chute and the chute dumps out onto a conveyor the length of the silos add-on silos okay so that conveyor is running as you're emptying a silo out and whatever wheat or whatever commodity gets spilled over the side of the conveyor you got to go down and shovel back onto the conveyor and it gets really dusty down there you definitely got to make sure you wear a dust mask hearing protection because it's loud so there's this conveyor which then runs over to the pit which then dumps as the grain as the as the conveyor slaps over the commodity goes into a chute that then slides down into the pit, which is underneath the main head house unit. And that pit, of course, is the same pit that the trucks dump into. And that's the same pit that the leg feeds off of. Okay. So if you don't want no grain, you go, actually I think, oh, there's, there's uh, lift gates, there's lift gates, how are those lift gates, are they on the, actually to control the silo discharge chutes, you have to go underneath and actually turn a dial to close them, okay, now the silos that are on the main head house unit, the, the four round ones or six round ones, there's actually a gate, up through the floor, a, a, a gate handle that controls the gate. As you lift up on it, there's a little catch lever. And once you want it open, you flip the catch lever and it holds it open. Now, if you want it closed, you just pick up on it, you press down on the catch release so it's up, and then drop the gate handle down that close to the gate. It stops the commodity going into the pit. So of the silos, of the four silos that are on the head house unit, they all flow directly into the pit. Of the other ones that are above the truck height, they all have discharge chutes that are either straight down or angled so they go into the pit. So as if you're dropping grain out of the, out of the overheads, you can't be anywhere near that because it's dropping the grain, dropping down right down into the pit or that's how you load a truck. Now you can load a truck from the side chutes or directly straight down. Okay, so then, inside this building which then discharges it into the outbound chute that, that goes into the grain cars. Now the concrete elevator I worked at, it had a, a uh, mechanically operated arm that could be swung into different positions to load the grain car. The steel bins that I worked at, you had to go up there and physically move the chute 
to the different positions of the green car, which was basically just three hoppers. Even though you see four hoppers, there's still only three inside the car. The main one actually has two, and the ones up over the trucks is just one each. Actually, maybe, maybe not. Maybe there was actually four hoppers. I don't remember. That was when I was like 15, 16, 17, 18 years old when I worked the elevators. Back in my high school days. But you actually had to get up on top of the train car, and this was way before safety safety uh, harnesses and safety cages and safety latches and everything. You're just up there walking along, uh, the, you know. So working a green car, filling a green car, you gotta go along and big big winch bar, physically turn the hatches down below, open them up, make sure there's nothing else inside. After they're all open, they bang it on the sides a little bit, then go back and close them. Then go up top and open all the hatches and look in, make sure you know nothing else was left. So then you have the either the winch or a wheel loader or a track mobile. We didn't have track mobiles, we had winches that would pull the car into, into position. Grab the uh, rope that was attached to the to the boom for the discharge chute, swing that over and stick it in the in the bay, in the open bay. And then they would kick the uh, distribution center dial over to the discharge chute, to the, to the scale, turn the leg on, and discharge, start discharging grain into the, into the hopper from the leg, and that would go into the discharge chute, tip the scale, and then come down the discharge chute into the, into the grain car. Concrete bins are basically the same way. Like I said, you can uh, if you're loading into the into the uh, grain cars, even from the overheads, the grain would just drop straight down or down an angled one into the into the pit. The leg would pick it up from the pit, take it up to the discharge chute into its its hopper that was turned for the discharge and the scale chute, and just go right along. Uh, the elevator I worked at only had one leg. Some of them I know have two legs. So you could actually uh, unload a truck of one commodity, hold, and that's the thing. The bin, the bin, if it was just a 100 bushel or a 250 bushel truck, one bin would hold one truck. That's just a single or a dual axle uh, wheat truck. It wouldn't hold a whole trailer because a whole trailer is like, I think, 750 bushel or something. The grain trucks, I think the grain trucks, the big tandem 24 foot box grain trucks are eight or 900 bushel. So you couldn't hold a whole, you know, we, we would always get trucks in, custom cutters would come in. And if the leg wasn't running fast enough, if the weight, if the grain, well, I, I mainly worked weed harvest. If the wheat was a little wet, it tended to, you know, it didn't run as fast, so uh, you couldn't run, you know, you could only run the leg so fast. You could actually control how fast you wanted to run the leg. Oh great, I'm going to miss a double stack sitting up here, parked out here, waiting to get into hutch. Oh well. Two lead UP with a double stack, not the one I was following, but it is, I've got a lot of 40 foot uh, well cars on it. Anyway, so, yeah, it was fun working there. It was dirty when you had to work the pit, which was underneath the, the silos. Uh, working inside the silo was even worse because, I mean, uh, that, that and working the pit were probably about the same. But the opening, if I was, you know, you could slide in through the opening, the gate opening, and then you take a broom, get a broom, and you start sweeping off all the off the grain, off the bottom or the uh, walls of the, of the silo. And if it was hanging up above you, you never got into it from below. You always load your down from a from a cable or from a rope, a 
rope that had a seat attached to it, board, a, a one by six or a two by six, I should say, sat on that and low, got lowered down into the silo to knock the, the grain that was hanging up on the edge of the on, on the sides of the silo. I never did that, but I do remember somebody doing it, looking down at them while they scraped the grain off the side of the silos because it hung up. I mean, that's how wet it was. It could be nothing down below it, but it was hanging up. There's a big, big, you know, big ledge. Always, if you're always cleaning the silo out, you always had to go up top, look down to make sure nothing was hanging up. If anything that was hanging up, had to go down there and break it loose so it'd fall down. And after that, then you'd get in there and clean the, you know, clean the side walls and then clean the floor, the angled portion, all the way down to the chute. There's always man. There's manhole covers too. I guess if you didn't get, if you didn't go, through, you couldn't go through the, the gate silo or the, the gate chute. You went through a manhole. That's why the, the you know manholes that were two or three foot diameter up on the on the outside or inside sides of the silo. That's how you got into the silos to clean them. So all you people, you know, looking at a silo, an elevator, a green elevator, and you're thinking, you know, three or six or four or six silos to the head house unit, there's a lot more. I mean, the one, like I said, the one I worked at, it had, it had the four main ones, and then it had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think it had 16 more silos inside just the main unit. So it was a four silo, but it was spread apart enough to get two silos between them, which actually turned into, you know, like I said, there's 16, not counting the four. I think there were 16 silos besides the four round silos that you could actually see. While the arms are going off on this one, that's funny because there's no train. Huh. I guess the train sensor was still sensing the other train behind, or the sensor was still tripping from that train, because these aren't going on. Anyway, I'm coming up to a half hour mark, so uh, there's a little 101 on grain elevators. So, I guess any questions or anybody has anything else to add, or if you think I was completely bold BSing you then don't believe me and don't watch it again and don't comment because it'll probably be a thumbs down. I don't know. Take a thumbs down. Anyway, I gotta go.